the um, well, Kay. Well, thanks for coming on. Thanks for have. Thanks for letting me um, interview you. This is fantastic. This entire project has been a, a bit of a, I guess, a quiet dream come true. It's something I've always wanted to do, but I'm quite surprised I didn't do it about ten or fifteen years ago. And uh, I'm quite excited to be doing it now. And I'm, I'm fortunate everybody's been quite receptive. And I think I think uh, we can structure everything in a way that the people who tune in will actually uh, enjoy it and might have something to take away with them to, um, might have something to take away with them. Well, I hope so. You know, it's exciting. It's an awful lot of fun to do these things, and I hope that, you know, people do catch on as to how to tune in. That's 95% of it, I think. Um, I know that I've done this several times before, once with Eric Francis, Mm -hmm. and a couple of other times. I've recorded my own um, discs to explain how my textbook works. Oh, yeah. I I wrote a textbook for financial astrology, and I divided it into four parts. And so the first part is about your own business, starting your own business. Mm-hmm. And so we recorded uh, directions, more or less, on one of the MP3s. And if you can order it from our website if you want. Mm-hmm. It's, kind of an, it's interesting and funny because Marlene and I are funny. <laughs> <laughs> We're weird. <laughs> Anybody who would study such a strange, obscure subject. <laughs> I think it's fantastic. <laughs> I absolutely I and adore I, it. The only charts I know how to do anymore are just money charts. I don't know. I don't know how to do relationship charts for people. Well, what's the or difference? Or medical the, or any of that. What's the difference? All I know is money. <laughs> <laughs> what's the difference between a money chart and a relationship chart? Not much. No, really. You're saying birth chart, but instead of looking at uh, three, seven, nine, twelve houses. I look at two, five, eight, and eleven. And if there's a planet there, then it's a problem. And if there's no planet there, then you don't have a problem. Really? I didn't. I never thought of it like that. What do you mean by if there's no planet there, there's no problem? Well, if you don't have a problem, you don't have a problem if you don't have a planet in the second house. You go out and you earn money, $2 an hour when you're a kid, and $50 an hour when you're in the middle, and maybe 100 when you're old. Oh. It's just not a problem. That's but you earn money by the hour, and you earn it all by yourself. You don't have a problem, but it's not a problem. You just When you decide you need money, you go out and earn it. Oh, that's fascinating. Good house is the gambler. This is the guy who's standing down on the floor of the commodities exchange, waving his arms around, giving signals <laughs> to his fingers, yeah. and making hordes of money and losing hordes of money all in the same two or three minute time period. It's also a person. Um, fifth, fifth house is a gamble. Having a kid is a big gamble. Yep. Okay? Yep. It's a big gamble. And... Um, you know, it's also betting on horses or whatever, and having fun. So I'm not sure what you're saying, Kay. Are you saying that if there, um, so so what if there's a saying? planet there, yes, it's a problem. Like if you have Neptune there, you're going to get addicted to this gamble. But if you don't have a planet there, you probably say, "Oh, I wouldn't gamble. I wouldn't take any risks." Wow, that's fascinating. <laughs> That's fascinating. This is totally. De- I'm. I'm. I'm hooked. I'm hooked. So I'm totally hooked. So what does because because as we're cruising around, the brains are are telling that uh, if there are no planets in there, nothing's happening. So when so well, often no, it means it's not a problem. It's not. It's, you don't think about it. You don't do anything about it. I mean, you don't have to do anything about it. It takes care of itself. 
You don't have to go looking for a job that pays by the hour. It just happens. In the fifth house, you don't, you just don't gamble. You don't take any real big risks if you don't have a planet there. However, if you got a planet there, then then you have a problem. Okay. Oh, that's amazing. I never looked at it like that. Um, then in the eighth house is insurance and taxes. So if there are no planets there, it's no problem. It's not a problem. The insurance, you know, the company pays your insurance and takes your taxes out of your check, and you don't have any problems. And if there was a planet there, say if you you have depends. big challenges, you if you're self-employed, you're the one that takes the money to the bank to pay the taxes for the company. For example, you're the one that reads the insurance policies and makes sure that they're good, and that that your job and your family. Oh, this is unbelievable. So I would imagine, I would imagine sitting right here that, uh, that most people, almost everyone who's going to tune in would want to, would want to know this. I'm just going to change this input here on my headset. One second. And then, okay. There we go. I want to hear you a little more clear, clearly. <laughs> I have a raspy voice, and I'm sorry. Oh, your voice is fantastic. It's the, um, I've been switching everything around this morning. That's, uh-oh. Oh, there we go. So, 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 what are you saying? If someone were to look at their chart, and, and they see two, five, eight, eleven empty, life is great. They sail through the money part of their life. Of course, now the other planets are in all the other houses, like the seventh house, where you have relationships and all the other things. Wow, that's unbelievable. I got to tell you, I'm completely at a loss for words. I never looked at it like that, and I think it's fantastic. I hear constantly that it's if um, people who want something in those uh, in those houses, I just hear it constantly, and maybe people go looking for um, some kind of drama. I don't. I know. I never thought of it like that. Well, if you don't have any plans there, forget the drama. You ain't getting it. <laughs> so if you, you got planets there, like you know, Pluto, boy, you're going to get some good drama. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I have Pluto in my fifth house. It's going to be fun. <laughs> it's always fun. So look, so when you're looking at someone's, if you were to look at a an individual chart, what, how would you approach it if you're um talking to someone about this? Well. Normally, if people come to me, they have a specific problem, okay? Oh, okay. They're looking for a job. They're going to buy and sell real estate. They have um, money they want to invest. They wonder if they're going to be a good investor. Mm-hmm. And they're usually coming because I'm really at the elementary stage of this, um, of the learning about financial astrology. I'm teaching, and I'm giving the textbooks are are meant for the first time you look at it as a financial, you know, as finance, Mm -hmm. as money. So I'm training you from the very, very beginning. Most um, usually, I have students who are traders, so I'm teaching them basic astrology, and then I have the other group of students who are astrologers. And I'm teaching them very basic stock markets and um, forex and all that. Right. All the trading innuendos. So I have two types of students. Oh, that's fantastic. Actually, I'd imagine forex has gotten quite big. It's, yeah. Yeah. It's um, cheap to trade. Yeah, it's Fly. cheap to trade. Yeah, easy to get into, I guess. The... Um, so what do you see? Uh, so what do you see coming coming up in the future then for the next year? What do you? How do you think? Uh, well, I think employment's going to improve. Okay. Mm-hmm. And I think um, we are at the bottom of the real estate market, but it's going to last quite a while. This bottom. Yes. Um, I would almost maybe a year. 
or even you know 18 months that we're at this at where the price is all settle out and they act decent and they don't go up and they don't go down okay yeah so i think we've gotten to that point and the reason i'm talking about that is because the north node is moving into sagittarius and it's there for 18 months so i think it will probably settle out the real estate market oh that's People fantastic who are in their houses will stay there and you know then the all the other the other is societal change that's happening as the pluto's moved into capricorn right and what that means is we are going from the nuclear family to the grand family so people who need houses are going to move in with other people who have houses and usually that means family you know grandparents parents whatever yeah. whatever it takes okay to help out or vice versa so the the now the family becomes a grand family instead of just mom and dad and the kids right that makes sense and that'll be the whole pluto tr- transit of capricorn and then we'll have that social model for quite a long time so you think that's going to so that's going to contribute to the slowing uh, the slowdown in the housing market or the contribu- the extended yeah. trough it's going to yeah that's going to stabilize it quite a bit do you th- okay. do you think after that there'll be a a rebound? Uh, mm-hmm. It'll be one of those very slow rebounds like we witnessed in um, the eighties, where price house prices didn't change at all for like ten years. Right. Well, that makes sense. That'll be. That's okay. So it'll be a, it'll be a long, long time before we have one of those crazy bubbles. Oh, that's fascinating. So when you're looking at the, so how do you, so when you're looking at what's going to happen in the, um, the overall uh, movement in the economy, how do you, uh, what would you look for in, um, in the charts? How would you, uh, how would you begin looking at the charts? Um, does it depend on a sector of the economy that you're going to focus on, or does it, um, do you take a general movement or? <laughs> Pardon me? It really depends on what I'm asked about. Yeah, it does. I know that. I know. I'm trying to, I know. I know. I'm trying to ask you. Uh, trying to what am I looking at when I'm looking at a chart? I'm looking at 2, 5, 8, and 11. That's what I'm looking at. So are you looking at how, um, what impacts it or what's transiting it at that time? What's or? transiting it, what's, what will make it change, um... Gold, for example, has Pluto in the eighth house in Libra. Saturn is has has hit the Pluto in the gold chart, and it went sailing up. Okay. Okay. The price went up, up, up. Mm-hmm. Now it last month it's been squaring uh, Saturn, it's the gold Saturn. Yep. So the price has gone down, and it'll come back and square up some more, and the price should probably stay down for a couple of months. And if you are a um, commodities trader and you looked at gold, you would know that after the Chinese New Year and all the way until summertime, gold doesn't move very much in price. Year after year after year. It's a seasonal commodity. It's ruled by Leo, and Leo is ruled by the sun. Right. Yeah, of course. So it should be a little bit... Gold is not a good investment this year until next... Until winter time. Actually, October. When, um, when new student astrologers are... Uh, when they come to study with you, how do... do I teach them? Yeah, what do you teach them? How do the guys begin? First thing I teach them is void of course moon. Really? Second thing I teach them is retrograde Mercury. Third thing I teach them is retrograde Venus and Mars. Okay? Yep. And then I tell them Jupiter is the salesman 
and Saturn is the accountant. Yeah, it is. <laughs> can, you, can you explain quickly um, the importance of a void of course moon? That's it. Pardon me? I'm sorry, I missed that. My, my... Saturn, when, when the moon is void of course, yep. nothing happens. In other words, if you start a business with moon void of course, you might as well go back and turn the sign around and say closed and go out of business. Because nobody comes to see your store. Nobody comes to your restaurant. Or not enough to make money, okay? That makes perfect sense to me. Wow, that's unbelievably it's fascinating. It's so easy to avoid, you know? <laughs> yeah, it is easy to avoid. <laughs> so what do you look for and to have, um, if you're starting a process, if you're going to start a business, what do you, um, what do you do look I want? for? Yeah, what do you want? I want Jupiter and, or Jupiter near the sun. Oh. The sun near Jupiter. So right now the Jupiter's in Aries, so. April would be a wonderful time to start a business, as long as Mercury isn't retrograde. Right. Although a Mercury retrograde business will do well, okay? Yes. It takes a long, much longer time. So if you're an astrologer and you're helping out somebody starting a business, the one thing you want to do is give them the best chance possible. So you would say, don't, none of this retrograde Mercury stuff. Or Venus. Okay. Oh, yeah. There's no retrograde Mercury's, no retrograde Venus. Of course. When you try to get the planets around the chart in a desirable fashion. It's fascinating. So, are you saying it's not necessary to, to tr when, you're, when you're trying to do that, to lump all the planets in those, in those houses then, in the money houses? Oh, no. Uh -uh. Um, no. No, not unless you have an accounting business. <laughs> not insurance uh, I totally hear you. I really do. I know, yeah. I know what you're talking about. If, <laughs> if you had, you're right. If you had, um, <laughs> like you, you're doing radio and communication. Yeah. You want something in the third house. Yeah. <laughs> you want something in the ninth house. Because you're teaching people things. Yeah. Okay. And you want something in the first house to make you personable. Of course. Now, now, so can you? Are you able to help anyone if they don't have the the time of birth? Well, the first down. Oh, the first dollar you get. All right. This is the big deal with the business. Okay. Yeah. The first dollar you earn is the time your business starts. Wow. Okay. I'm writing it. I'm writing it down. First dollar. Well, you could buy my book. Yeah, I have to do that. I write that down in my book five or six times. But it's the first dollar you earn. So we have a business. I have astrologicalinvesting.com. Yep. And at that business, I have my books for sale. Okay, that's the one thing we sell. So one day somebody punched the button. For PayPal, PayPal dutifully recorded it, and that was the chart for our business. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Okay, so you're telling me that uh, uh, perhaps we don't have control over the birth of our chart? Well, in a way, we knew that that would happen. Um, I had another friend who uh, wanted to sell her product on our site. Yes. And she arranged for a client of hers, or a friend of a client, or something like that, to, to buy the book at exactly that time that she had predetermined. Okay, to push the PayPal button. Yep, I, yeah. Fascinating. And we love it. We love her for doing it because we make a little commission on this. Does that, uh, do you, um, in your personal opinion, is that, uh, is that fair game? Are you allowed to sure. do that? Sure. I, I don't know. I don't know. I just ask you. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, why not? You might as well. I had one girlfriend who decided that the best, and this is a, she's a real good astrologer, who decided she was going to open her bookstore 
and she wanted you to put her on the ascendant for this bookstore. Yep. Okay. That's what she wanted. The only way she could get it would be to open at 3 o'clock in the morning. Oh, man. Yeah. She has a very good friend who came over and bought a book at 3 o'clock in the morning. Oh, wow. Well, it has to be done The de- to where you make your, when you, you make your first it, dollar. Yeah. If you want to do it. Now, my son-in-law, mm-hmm. we were going to have him open his business on Monday. But Easter Sunday, somebody came riding by on a motorcycle and needed a spark plug. Yes. Because, okay. So they saw that he was, he had a business. And Kirby said to the guy, um, I'm not open yet. And he said, but oh, I need a spark plug. Don't you have any spark plugs? And Kirby went in there and sold him a $2 spark plug. Well, I have, Kirby's still in business, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> but I had to make a chart for that exact time. But no, okay. Now, listen, the Greeks, back in the good old days when they had to sail ships around the Mediterranean, mm-hmm. managed to to tell the captain exactly what time to leave. They had a problem, you know. They didn't want to get shipwrecked. So the astrologers had to work really hard yeah. to find exactly the right um, time to, to leave port. Yeah, <laughs> of course. Or they didn't have a return customer. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> yeah, really, I can imagine. It's okay. Why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Tell us your background. I should have probably asked you this first, but why don't you tell us a little bit about your background? Tell us, that, um, you know, specifically where people can find you. What... You don't want to start on April 1st, buddy. I don't want to start on April 1st? All right, I'll cross it off. All right, I'll cross it off. I think you want to start April 5th, 16th. 16th? Mm-hmm. Double check. Oh, you have your computer program right in front of you. <laughs> hey, listen, I used to have to take five minutes to do these damn things. <laughs> I get it. Wow, I get it. <laughs> April 18th. Okay. Well, back when I had a Trash 80. Yeah, a Trash 80. Yeah, I, I had to put it up on the screen. Um, and all that. I mean, and, and copy it off the screen, off my TV screen. Oh, uh, yeah. Terrible. And then I got an apple. And life improved immensely. With the apple? I'd wait five minutes. <laughs> mm-hmm. Okay, where do you find the birth chart for companies then if you're looking to invest in individual companies? Because, I mean. Well, we actually have a list. Oh, <laughs> uh, no. Okay. Way. Oh goodness! We have a, we. There is a financial astrologer who actually makes a list of when the company started, and when it was incorporated, and when it <clears throat> went public. That's amazing. And in my book three, yeah, actually in book one and two, I have some of those. But in book three, I have all the Dow thirty stocks. Oh, fantastic! And the make headlines, you know. Well, how many books do you have out now? Well, there's there's four all together. Yep. One is for business, and one is to teach you how to read a financial chart. And the third one is about the Dow 30 and all the little tricks we have learned over the past 20 years. And um, 25 years. Um, and then the book four is for commodities. And then... There will be a book five, and it'll be currencies and uh, exchanges. Oh, fascinating. What is, what is <clears throat> excuse me, what's been the biggest change that you've noticed in the last 25 years and how you approach everything? Oh, when we started this, we had no idea what was going on. Oh, I could imagine. You know, I really could imagine. It's exciting. We it really doing, is. We were trying to <clears throat> figure out the Dow by putting up the New York Stock Exchange's chart. Oh, yeah. That was was really stupid because what we needed was the chart for the 
when the Dow was first published. I mean, it was we did a lot of dumb things. I could imagine. I can imagine, but I bet it was fun. I mean, I, I really do. I bet, and I bet you, uh, you enjoyed researching it. I remember trying to do stuff like that back when I was younger as well. It was well, crazy. Well, the nice thing is, is we're all getting old now, and um, we're able to bring in some fantastic young people. Like the March 28th. That's from the calendar. No, the biggest problem with Mercury retrograde, and it, oh, God, it goes down to, all the way to Taurus. I don't know if you want an Aries or, right before that, March 18, I'd look March, March 18, all the way down to the 24th, okay? As a, that, that's just the beginning part, beginning point. Then you got Saturn retrograde and Saturn retrograde is really good in the business chart. Is it really? Why is yeah, that? Yeah, keeps, keeps the accountant quiet. Keeps, how, I, I don't understand. I'm it not, keeps the accounting twi- quiet. It keeps the financial officer quiet. Everything is nice and to the books, and there's nothing to worry about, I guess. Right. It's amazing that you say that. In the last couple of weeks, people we've been talking about manifesting through astrology, helping our dreams come true. And people have been saying resolving Saturn conflicts or found, letting Saturn be at peace within the chart is one of the keys to fulfilling or unlocking some of the promises within a natal chart. It's retrograde is being very peaceful. I like that. I like I back off it. That's fascinating. Wow, I wish I studied with you, Kay. These are totally, I like the whole idea that there's no planet, no problem. <laughs> Saturn is retrograde, no problem. Oh, it's fantastic. Well, you can buy my books. Yeah, I think I should. They're I think $25 we... each or four for 82. Mm-hmm. 87, I forgot how much. Do you have any work... do, that part. do you do any and workshops or anything coming up? Oh, no, I don't teach out mm-hmm. loud. Out loud? No lecture. <laughs> If you want to talk to me, you take my classes. Uh, okay. Are your your classes online? Are they? Yeah, I teach online. I oh, teach nice. in the chat room. Oh, fantastic! I will teach on the telephone, but I don't like to. We're on Skype. No. But my favorite way is to teach in the chat room. That way, everything's recorded, and the next week you can look at the lesson you did. You know the homework. What you didn't do your homework. Um, <laughs> um, you can look at the homework that was assigned, and you can read what you learned last week on the uh, on the chat. So it's all saved, and I send it right directly to you after the chat is over. Oh, I think that's a very well, and you can ask me all kinds of questions. I never shut up. <laughs> well. And I have a, a disciplinarian son here who tells me, Mom, you've been on two hours and you're only supposed to be on for an hour. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> they're not paying you for that other hour. No, they're not. No, they're not. <laughs> but I don't, I don't charge a lot. And I think if, if you don't learn a lot, it, if, if you're not even a trader or an investor, okay, if you if you don't do those things, you buy and sell cars, you buy and sell houses, um, and you have friends who do it, and you can help them. You know, it's it's a good thing for every astrologer to know. Oh well, I think and, it's, it's and in the book one, most you know, it's sort of a review for a good astrologer. So, you know, gives them a nice review of everything they've learned. How did you decide upon focusing on financial astrology? Oh, Grace Morris came to a NCGR meeting. I'm education chairman of NCGR, the National Organization. Mm-hmm. And anyway, she came to the meeting, and she said, I'm going to have a conference in Oaklawn. Well, Oaklawn was about oh, an hour and a half away from my house. But I didn't mind. I drove out there to this workshop, and it was 1986. And all of the people who are financial astrologers 
were there. None of them had gray hair. <laughs> I didn't either. <laughs> and we all got together, and we enjoyed it. We had a good time, and we realized what we needed to learn, what we really needed to learn. And so basically, my books are the notes from all these conferences because Grace had one year after year after year. Um uh, in Chicago, I was able to go and help her out sometimes or just hang out and talk to everybody. Some guys were developers, and they were able to um, program some interesting programs and to, um, to use with financial astrology. Yeah. And then there were people like me who just wanted to teach the basics and get everybody learning this stuff. Wow, that's fantastic. Wow, that's truly amazing. Wow, you're leaving me speechless. Unbelievable. I take notes when we speak, and I usually go back and go blah, 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 but you're leaving me speechless. Your whole approach is unbelievable. It's a, it's such, it's a really, cl it's a very clear approach. It's an honest way of looking at it, I think. It's a, On my website, yeah? I wrote out um, special predictions for the year ahead for each one of the sun signs. Yeah. And... You know, you can go to the website and read it, www.astrologicalinvesting.com. Yep. Spell it all correctly. And so let's say you're a Capricorn. So you're a natural leader and you're a natural manager. So you need to find something to do with that where you're the, the boss. And you might want to consider the recycling business. Because right now, and for quite a few years, Pluto will be in Capricorn. So you might want to help in the recycling business. Oh, now, if yes? If you're Aquarius, you're a good teacher because you're really smart. Mm -hmm. And you should be teaching technology. Teaching technology. You might find, yeah, you might find a way to invent a unique business that has to do with computers and technology, or maybe um, anything in that realm. That's the advantage of, of um, financial astrology. One of the things my traders do is they go through the calendar for the month mm -hmm. and decide whether the market is going to go up or down. Okay, right. The aspects that the moon makes to the various planets. Right. Sometimes. Yeah, I yeah, it's okay. The what do um what do most of your guys trade? What are they mostly trading these days? I mean, well, like I'm guessing they're pro I'm guessing they're probably not trading individual companies. I'm guessing they're probably trading. I'm guessing they're probably trading the forex, or they're doing um, or they pro or they might be trading options. That would be a neat thing for them to do oh, as they well. Love options. Yeah. Oh. I have one guy who says, I want to trade shorts. Stop, stop telling me mom. Yeah, I want to trade shorts. Yeah. Yeah, he can make a lot of he can make a lot of money really fast in a bad economy. <laughs> when the economy tanks out, that's for sure. Love trading shorts. I can blows me away. And then I have a uh, stock club. They're all astrologers. Can the stock club be found on the website? On the astrologicalinvesting.com website? It tells you a little bit about what they did or they have done in the past. Right. The, oh, but I'm, it doesn't tell you what they've invested in. Oh, no, of course not. Or um, are there, Unless they sold it. Are there way, ways uh, for people to join up? No. No? Okay. No. They have to make their own. Oh, neat. So oh. you have to get a bunch of friends and have your own little club. And do you... But we give you the outline or the bylaws to make a club if you want one, and it's right on the website, the bylaws. Do you mentor, the, do you mentor, the, organize the, it. Huh? do you mentor the clubs at all? A little bit, you mm -hmm. know, from like on, uh, on a chat room or something, I would, you know, if somebody said they wanted to do it, I would explain the various ways to get a, you know, group together. Oh, yeah. That sounds like fun, you know. <laughs> really, I bet they have a blast doing it. We've been doing it for 15 years now. Really? Wow. Yeah. 
We split off from another group, and um, so the total is 15. But the actual this actual club is about seven. Seven years. It's amazing. And, you know, we go to everybody's wedding and um, kids' wedding. Yeah. <laughs> Cheer for all the grandchildren. You know. The it's friendly. It's a friendly fun thing to do. What were you doing before you became an astrologer? Uh, I was a, actually a public school teacher. Oh, very cool. And then I had um, my husband started a business, and I helped him out with that. And then I, became, and then he hired this secretary. Mm-hmm. And this was 1978. Yep. And she liked astrology, and we started studying it and studying it and studying it. And I fired her. <laughs> <laughs> Good girl. <laughs> happens. Yeah, it totally happens. Oh, that's fantastic. Well, is there anything that you any um anything you'd like to to tell everybody before um that I may have uh, forgotten to ask you? I mean, we're having a different kind of interview here. It's if the uh, I don't really have. Sp- I mean, we've kind of covered the specific questions. And the um, well, it should it it should be an interesting year ahead. It's a good, it's a wonderful year for starting your own business, getting your act together to start a business. No, what you will be a good business year too. Now you mentioned that I haven't had a chance to read your article yet. I just saw it. I just saw it right before I called you. What's um? Why do you, why are you um? Do you think it's a good year to start a business? Oh, let's see. You have a choice between Jupiter and Aries and Jupiter and Taurus. That would be the one, two right there, right? <laughs> okay. <Yeah. laughs> and then um, you have a um, Saturn in Libra is, is really in its exaltation, and it is an excellent sign for Saturn. So there you have that one. Um, and it's just a good year, more or less. I mean, it should be a good year for the markets. It should be a good year for almost everything. Oh, that's fantastic. Especially farmers. Especially farmers. <laughs> what are you yeah, talking about? that's food to sell. <gasps> Why do you think it's going to be a good year for farmers? Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. No, it's really, it's, it's going to be, it's going to be a tough weather year, okay? A really tough weather year. Oh, really? Oh, uh, yeah. So the farmers that are successful that don't have to fight too much weather. They'll be very they'll successful. Be yeah. And John Deere. <laughs> yeah. And every farmer's outlet. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Those kind of places. So, I mean, that's that's basically what it is. It's a good year for, um, well, it's, it's, it's going to be a good year for farmers. As, you know, if they're successful and the mother doesn't kill them too badly. But yeah. the, this is a huge country. It really is, with thousands of different growing zones. So, they, you know, there will be plenty. Oh, it's absolutely massive. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It is. I mean, it's just huge. Same thing with Canada. I mean, you know, the same deal. Oh, I couldn't. Yeah, it's it's crazy up here. I was, t- I was spending a lot of time on the coast of uh, of Oregon in the last in the last year, and I just could not calibrate. Uh, my friend said, "Let's go to the next town for dinner." And down there, the next town might be twenty, thirty minutes away, and uh, you're in a, a whole new city. Whereas up here, it's like four hours to the next outpost of people. I, I couldn't. I couldn't. It just took a bit for me to. To to wrap my to calibrate my head around the concept of just hopping in and driving to, down the down to another town it was crazy. <laughs> it's huge. It's huge. Well, actually, I've driven the Alcan, so I know. Yeah, it was really cool. Actually, I thought it was neat. All right, so I, I should. That's, that's enough. I'm at www.astrologicalinvesting.com. Yep, I've got your photo. And I think I have your photo. Fo- I think I put your photo on the Facebook page with uh, 
I'm not sure. Did I? I made an entry today on your. Oh yeah, feel free to do to post whenever you like. There's um, I haven't looked at it yet today, or maybe I have. I'm not sure, but uh, I think your I think your photos up there with your bio and um, Great. the links to your site. And buy the book and join up and. Oh. <laughs> I will. And enjoy all the um, year ahead and and be prosperous and. You figure out a way to monetize your business. <laughs> yeah, of course. Well, I hope everybody finds a way to monetize their their business. Really, but I'm hoping to monetize mine better. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I teach, and uh, if you're just the kind of person who can learn reading a book, buy the books. Yep. Well. Okay. Absolutely. Well, thanks for having thanks for having us on. <laughs> thanks for uh, thanks for speaking with me today, Kay. I appreciate it. Well, thanks for having me on your show. All right. Okay. Yeah. Have a and fun. I'm happy to come back whenever you feel like it. Oh, thank you. I might I okay. might pick you up on that. Have a great day. Okay. Okay. Bye bye.